This is Charlie Flow World Sports Show. I'm joined by Boston goalkeeper Alyssa Nayar. I want to thank you for joining me, especially on the road. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? Oh, good, good. It's always a pleasure to speak with a goalkeeper who's made double-digit saves within the week. <laughs> yeah, it was a fun one. So what was like you know, some of the game plan going in this game? You guys are going up against the defending champions. You had a tough game against them a few weeks ago, but probably a lot of bright spots in the game where you guys probably have faith that you could probably beat this team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we, you know, I feel like a lot of us um, kind of left that game in Portland thinking that, um, you know, we, especially in the first half, you know, we went up three times um, and then they, they just kept coming back. But, um, you know, we definitely thought that going into this game on our home field that it was one that we could that we could take away from them. So um, we want, I mean, we wanted to finish the season with a, with a big win. Um, and that was that was one that we really wanted, and um, I think we came out as a team and kind of just went after it and put together a, a solid 90-minute performance. Now, being it was your your home finale, definitely a great way to end the season. You know, as a goalkeeper, are there any like traditions or, or superstitions you have preparing for the game? Um, I try to stay away from superstitions a little bit. Um, don't really like to get into the the mind games and whatnot. Um, kind of stay, you know, just get ready for the game in, in different ways and um, just try to get as focused as I can and but at the same time stay relaxed um, and, you know, just kind of put myself in the best position um, to be able to be the most successful. I mean, you're having a game like you did against um, um, Portland over the weekend and you're making saves left and right, you know, I mean, there's a lot of probably confidence for your teammates, but there ever times where they just don't want to talk to you because they don't want to bust up the clean sheet? Yeah, no, um, I mean it's never, never really discussed. But I think, you know, going into going into any game, not just me as the goalkeeper, but I think the 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 back line in general takes a lot of pride in getting shutouts as well. So I think that collective energy and collective mindset toward um, we want this, we want to keep a clean sheet going into it, just gives everybody that little extra edge to you know make that little extra tackle here. Um, deny that shot, deny that cross. So kind of in the minds of kind of all five of us, especially in the back, um, that's kind of what we got going for us. Your back line did some help save a few shots off the line. I mean, it's always a good feeling, I guess, when you have that probably that gut feeling, oh, crap, you know, I'm off my line, I might be beat, but then you have a defender right there in the goal for you. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, I mean, they were cleared, I think, two off of just me coming out, and then I think, one was a corner kick that went to the near post that was cleared, um, and obviously that gives that gives me a, a ton of confidence just to be able to know that um, you know defenders have you know they're working hard to get in behind and fill in that that space and um, you know be ready to kind of clear those balls off. So that was that was big time. And after the game, we saw you chatting a little bit with Anger, one of the better goalkeepers in the world. Was there anything that she gave you advice-wise or gave you like a thumbs up? Because it was a heck of a performance and it looks like you guys chatted for a few seconds. Uh, just a bit. I mean, me and me and her go go back a little ways just playing against each other in, in Germany for those two years as well. And our paths have crossed numerous times at this point. So I think just um, there's a, a really large respect level um, on both sides. Uh, just kind of one of those, um, you know, give a handshake and a – you know, job well done and um, kind of, you know, return the favor a little bit. Um, she's obviously definitely done really well for herself as well. So anytime you can get to and against her is big time for us too. So um, just just a moment of respect, I guess. Now there's a thing that keepers always hate. I have to ask my keepers when I have them on the shows, being a keeper myself, coach keepers. Anybody on your team you just hate to face PKs against? to save PKs again? Or take, or take PK, PK, like on, on your own team when you got to do practices, there's somebody on your team you just like, oh gosh, i got to save your PK? <laughs> um, Good question. I mean, Katie Shepard probably might be one. She, I mean, she just comes up and she just smacks it. So even if you can get a hand to it, um, there's a good chance it's still going in and you never really know where the ball's going to go. So she's a tough one to go against for sure. And I guess you don't have to worry about facing Hayo in the game since she's on your side. I mean, she's just seemed to be money in tough situation last week, missing off the post. But, I mean, for able to stay composed and end up putting in one a little later, I mean, that must say a lot about her because it's, from the kicker point of view, very frustrating to miss. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, even 
I remember when she was going up to take it, and at this point she's, I think that was her seventh penalty that she's taken so far this season. And at this point, you know, it just kind of comes down to a mind game because you've watched, now these other teams have watched her take different penalties, so they they can have a sense of where she wants to go, and the fact that she's still been able to put it away the first six of them is really impressive. And, uh, and it was still as a... It was a good look for her against in against this one, and you know Unger is really she's really well known for uh, being tough to go against in penalties as well. So that's that's tough. Also, a little bit of an extra mind game, and just to kind of be able to recover mentally. I think a lot of times when a a player um, doesn't convert a penalty, it's kind of tough to bring yourself back up to finish the game. I think that says a lot about her that she's able to kind of come down and stay so composed and have what I thought was a brilliant finish against um, Unger later on. Not to give up all your secrets, but what are some of the things that go through your mind when Tommy's saying about PK? Do you do a lot of reading the players or a little bit of kind of leaning towards or is a, a lot of combination of scouting players? What some of the things that goes into you, your planning for PKs? Um, for me, it would probably just be trying to get a, uh, a just a, an educated guess, I, I would say, is probably the best way to put it. But kind of try to read the player's body language a little bit, read the um, location of, you know, different different bodies, different body parts and whatnot, and just kind of hold, hold as long as I possibly can and try not to get too antsy and lean one way or the other too early. So um, just give myself the best chance I can to react to whichever direction it's going to go. Now, your career, you've been playing goalkeeper. You've had a lot of success. You've played on the youth teams and had a lot of success there. When did you start playing goalkeeper, and when did that become a, a realistic you know, position you could excel at? I probably became a full-time goalkeeper, I guess, around 13, 14. I think growing up, kind of played half on the field, half in the goal, always. And I grew up playing basketball a lot as well, and um, just loved being able to kind of that hand-eye coordination. Um, was always was always um, important to me. So I always enjoyed playing in goal, um, but it wasn't probably until I was 14 that it became something that I didn't want to play on the field anymore. I just wanted to be in goal and dive around and um, get a little dirty and dive in the mud and whatnot. So um, and at that point, it just kind of kept kept escalating a little bit and kept going further and further. And I just I kept loving it, so kept playing. What's some advice you would give to like a, a young, you know, girl or boy that's about that age, 12, 13, and work a lot of keepers that age that you know really wants to play keeper, but they're all unsure. You know, what what's some advice you would give them? I would say just to kind of keep playing, um, you know, doing different things to enhance different hand eye coordination things like playing other sports or you know even just you know tossing a baseball around or different things. Playing basketball helped me a lot just in in that sense and try to try to focus on all the there's so many different asset or um, aspects of goalkeeping it's not just one skill that you can master and then kind of be successful at it you need to be a good shot stopper you need to be able to deal with crosses read the game you know do well with your feet so um trying not to just focus on i want to be a great shot stopper you know really enhance all the aspects of the position so you can be as well-rounded as you can. And they're saying a lot of a lot of European goalies are now like you know being extra field players, you know, using their feet and helping with the attack and even pushing up. You know, what, what's your opinion on that? Some of that with the goalkeepers being that maybe fifth defender. Yeah, I think that's. I, I agree. I think even if you just watched the the men's World Cup recently, obviously uh, the German goalkeeper Neuer did that. You know, perfectly almost um, being that sweeper keeper role, and I think that it's. You know, it's definitely helpful if a team wants to play, you know, with a little bit of a higher line or just give that little extra support in the back to kind of be either an outlet um, to restart the attack or to kind of dump it back to be able to catch your breath for a second or regain your shape and kind of get ready to to push forward again. So uh, I like it. I think it's, you know, I think it makes it a more – involved position instead of just kind of standing back there waiting for things to come to you um and you can be more involved with the team aspect of it yeah i totally agree i have that that issue with a lot of my goalkeepers they tend to fall asleep in goal if you ended up on a 
very one-sided match, but this way, like, you got to be alert, you know, you have to be ready, because as a goalkeeper, you looked at the stats, you know, they guys outshot you about 15 shots, about five or six of your guys, so you're facing a lot of action, there's easily, you know, Nayar could have fell asleep in the goal. Yeah, so I think by being able to stay involved with, uh, in that kind of sweeper-keeper role a little bit, kind of helped stay, to stay involved and stay ready and not being, you know, just sitting back there waiting for something to happen, so I think that that was very helpful. Well, I don't want to hold you up too much. Wish you the best of luck in the remaining of the season and in the off season. So very, very, very thankful for joining me, take, taking the time out. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. All right, thank you. Yeah, no problem.